Warning! This video contains many rare species of moths that have never been filmed before. Today I am studying and observing moths in the country of Uganda. And it's gonna be another special episode because it contains many species who have never been filmed before. Welcome to the best YouTube channel about butterflies and moths. Let's get started. My name is Bart Coppens, a traveling entomologist that travels the world to look for rare butterflies and moths. And you are watching my Uganda series. That's right, I travel to Uganda, a country in Africa, to document the rarest butterflies and moths. Find the playlist for more Uganda episodes. All right, everyone, I'm here with my friend Glenn in a cottage where we're going to stay for three days. So let's find out what kind of insects we can find here. Hello, everyone, this is Bart Coppens, the sexy moth king. And today I am in the mountains in Uganda. Currently, we are at the border of a national park. I believe it's called Mount Elgon National Park. Correct me if I'm wrong. The point is, it's a mountain and the environment is here is very different because of the high altitude. It's very cool, the air is very fresh, there's a lot of flowers and thankfully not a lot of development and farmland. Nature here seems amazing and we're gonna do an awesome moth trapping night here. Fun fact, we're not just gonna do one, we're going to do three moth trapping nights in this place and I'm going to film all the moths that we are going to encounter in this place. I can't wait to see what insects live here. Mount Elgon is a mountain on the border of Uganda and Kenya. It's also a national park. Mount Elgon National Park. Interestingly, not many people have surveyed the local moth species and insects here, so I'm gonna go here to investigate it. There could still be several undescribed and endemic species. My aim is to help the environment by recording and documenting these insects. We're going to do a survey. And I'm actually going to take DNA samples as well. So if there's any newer endemic species, we could find out later. It's actually an ancient volcanic mountain and it has rare animals and plants found nowhere else. The environment is pretty cool and at night it gets chilly despite the warm days. Perhaps it's the altitude. Let's get started. Say hi to YouTube. Yeah, hi YouTube. This is the double moth trap. Two lights. Let's see how it works. All right, folks, we're just getting started, but already there's a lot of moths coming in. If I see something that's interesting, maybe I will put it in my cage, especially if it's a female. It's also my way to remove stuff from the sheet, just to know that I've already seen it. There are some small stuff coming in right now, but over time we may expect to see larger ones, who knows. All 
All right, one of the first moths of the night is this very typical. I'm not sure if it's Arctidae or Zigaeni day. They could be both, to be honest. The antennae look more Zigaeni like, but I could be wrong. Anyway, these moths tend to be common here. There's already several on the sheet, as you can see. There's another one. All right, sorry I had to blow that mosquito away. So one of the first larger moths of the night is a leopard moth. The interesting thing about leopard moths is as a family they are severely understudied. And here on the highlands and high altitudes on Mount Elgon there could be several species who are poorly described or rarely ever filmed or photographed. So for documentation purposes, this is going to be one fascinating night. Could be a big diversity of insects here. Just look at that. So here's what I'm going to do. If I see something interesting, folks, I take it just like that. Oops. Found another one of the same species again. Seem to come in early because the sun has just only gone down. And already there's two of these. I do suppose that is a good sign. Very interesting. The generator sounds a bit wonky now. Yeah. It's definitely not smooth sailing. All right, so this is an unusual one. It seems to be from the genus Admia. Now, I don't know too much about these cuties, but it was good to identify them down to genus level. This is a really mysterious species. I am not even sure if this is a Lassio Campidae or a Hepialidae species for once. I am totally baffled. It could even be an undescribed species of leopard or ghost moth. I checked the records for both moth families, but nothing similar turns up. I hope to submit a DNA sample of this moth to a laboratory to I reveal its identity, or to find out if it is truly a new species to science. Here on Mount Elgon, the local species have been poorly documented, which is why we are doing a survey here. If it's a new species to science, I will help to name it. Silk moth, it's coming. It's coming, it's very large, can you see it? Only grab. So this is a very fascinating species of silk moth, but there's some bad news. One of its wings seems to be imperfect. See, this wing is not developed properly. It has a wing imperfection. Other than that, very fascinating. This needs further investigation for sure. Now, some people will say, Bart, why are you handling the moth like this? Is that not cruel? Is it not hurting it? The answer is no. Please take a look at all my other videos and you will conclude I am an expert at handling silk moths without hurting them. If you don't believe me, really check out my other videos. I promise you, I know what I'm doing. Anyway, this silk moth, um, it's beautiful, but I wish it was not damaged. First, I'm taking out all the big moths, guys. Otherwise, they tend to clog up the sheet. So here's another one of those silly leopard moths. And if it's big, I just place it in here for a while in quarantine. I release them back tomorrow. This appears to be the old tropical Arabic moth, Paracalciopa monoplaneta. It has been recorded at least in Congo, Rwanda and Uganda. Comes another one ladies and gentlemen, another one. Let's hope this one has more normal wings. I hope it comes to the other side. It does. All the 
concealed moths here are beautiful, but much to my frustration, they are damaged. I don't know why their wings are in this poor condition. This is the second one that I find, and there are many imperfections on the wings. I wonder what's to deal with that. Still, I'm happy to get finally some really wild silt moths in Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, it's another silk moth coming in. Let's hope. Oh, it, it looks like something different this time. Ah, very nice. It looks like Nuda Aurelia. And gentlemen, it looks like we've got a female of Nuda Aurelia. This could even be Nuda Aurelia Dione or a related species. I'll display the actual name in the video. But if I'm right, the cool thing is, this is a species that I've actually reared before in the Netherlands. Maybe I'll make a rearing tutorial about them on YouTube, how to breed them in captivity. This silk moth is easy to breed and it's very beautiful. Sorry for the noise of the generator in the background, it's burning the fuel, running our lights. But just take a look at this precious little silk moth. It's funny to see something in the wild that you have reared in captivity. And it's very beautiful. Very nice temper moth. Right here is a slug moth from the genus Stenolita. I believe it can be the species Stenolita anacompa. It is found in many countries such as Cameroon, Congo, Equatorial Guinea, Gambia, Ghana, Ivory Coast, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, Toho and Uganda. And this amazing green boy is a noctuid from the genus Neotis. There are many species in this genus. This individual here is green and overwhelmingly cute. On my YouTube channel you can see moth species from all over the world, even in mountains in Uganda. Hope you are enjoying this experience as much as I am right now. This appears to be the moth species Tolna Bertoni. It is one of those cool true rabbits that belong to the groups of witch moths and underwings and it does have some incredible markings. Now, this family of moths is rather appealing. I don't think too much faunistic research has been done on them. Very beautiful. Ha, ah, well I think this is Stenoplusia eucoides, a very unusual species of noctuid moth with iridescent coppery metallic patches on its wings. Wow, is it not just fascinating? Found in Burundi, Cameroon, Congo, Ethiopia, Kenya, Malawi, Nigeria, Rwanda, South Africa, Tanzania, Uganda and Zimbabwe. Very cool, very cool.
Ladies and gentlemen, there is a huge hawk moth here, can you see it? Let's have a close look at it, carefully. Very beautiful and very large. It kind of reminds me of the European popular hawk moth, but like on steroids, on testosterone. Of course it's a totally different species, right? You know that, you realize that. So good, we're finally getting some big, juicy, beautiful moths. And the night is still young. So who knows what awesome species we're going to find in the country of Uganda. If you want to go to Uganda, ladies and gentlemen, maybe in the future it will be possible to book tours with us. We're experimenting a little, trying to find the nicest places to film, photograph and find rare species but in the future we may set up tours and then my fans can travel with me imagine booking a Bart Coppens tour yeah and I'll show you around moth trapping who knows anyway for now we focus on this beauty so the identity of this new moth is not 100% certain to me but the best match I could find is the hawk moth Polyptychoides Vuatuxi from Ghana, Ivory Coast, Nigeria and presumably Uganda. However I could be wrong. Please correct me if you think I am mistaken. Identifying some of these pieces can be hard and your suggestions are very much appreciated. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, actually a pink moth. Who would have thought? It's actually really pink. Cheers folks, so far we're having a really good night, got some giant silk moths, got some leopard moths, a whole bunch of them, and even a giant hog moth. Now the point of coming here up to this mountain is that in the highlands the moth species tend to be totally different from what you expect to find in the lowlands. And so far that prediction came true. I found moths here so far that I haven't seen yet. During my two and a half weeks in the lowlands in Uganda. But in the mountain, the climate is different. The animals, the plants are different, yeah. So that's cool. I'm happy. A few more giant silk moths would be nice though. The more the better. You know I'm a sucker for silk moths. One of the things we cannot help but notice here is the large diversity of leopard moths. The Lassio Campidae. Now guys, I've always been quite fascinated with this family of moths. But I'll tell you, sometimes it's really hard to identify them. Because there is so little information about them. Many are very poorly recorded, if they are recorded at all. As you can see, these are males of some very large species. Some are as big as hog moths. But all of these, I swear, are leopard moths. Imagine how big the female of this species must be if this is presumably the male. But yeah, hog moths seem to be, uh, sorry, leopard moths seem to be stealing the show tonight. Many forms, shapes, sizes, uh, you know. There could be local endemic species who are poorly ever recorded or studied. So in that regard, that's really exciting. Look at these huge leopard moths. This is a rather unusual moth. Very strange. The entomologist in me is telling me this one is worthy of better examination. You look at that, that's a strange body shape, isn't it? Very weird. Now, 
Yeah, right. trust the system anymore. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if things suddenly sound very quiet, it's because we switched from the generator to the power grid. Saves us some noise pollution, but the power grid here is never 100% reliable. So as a backup, we have the generator. Anyway, let's proceed. This angelic tiger moth, if I'm not mistaken, appears to be Amerela bubo. It's found in Angola, Congo, Ethiopia, Kenya, Malawi, Mozambique, Namibia, Rwanda, South Africa, Tanzania, Uganda, Zambia and Zimbabwe. Larvae feed on a variety of poisonous plants and the ghostly white appearance makes this moth really special and beautiful. Well, this appears to be a cute little geometrid. Very intricate. This right here is a species of Problepis. There are several species of them in Africa. They are often beautiful, thick and snow white species of geometrids, with eye spot like markings that have silvery metallic scales. Is gorgeous and just to die for. I'm unable to tell what species this is precisely, but I'm beyond ex impressed by the extreme beauty of these animals. Oh, I love moths so much, I could cry. This seems to be the local population of Mechistorabdia burgessi, a type of tiger moth species that seems to fly at higher altitudes in general. Well, that makes sense as we're on a mountain. I um, admire it for a moment. This giant moth kinda looks like a dead leaf. It is the female of a yet unidentified species of Mimopacha. Identifying the females of these leopard moths is hard because they are more rarely photographed, collected or documented than the males. But this is a genus of leopard moth that has a dozen or so species in Africa. It could also be an unknown species, but I don't think so. While it may sound more unlikely, it is not out of the question because many moths in these regions are poorly documented. So if this is a female, it could be interesting to see if she can lay eggs for captive breeding purposes. I do like these super fascinating types of leopard moths. Very beautiful. Now, ladies and gentlemen, leopard moths are funny creatures. Typically, they can be very hairy. Both the moths and their caterpillars tend to be very hairy. And while there's exceptions, they don't tend to be very colorful. Most species have dark tones from gray to beige to brown. As are pretty much all the leopard moths that I've shown you so far in this video. They tend to be overlooked because they are not super colorful most of the time and can be hard to and very complex to identify in some cases. 
but they are worth looking into. In a way, I would say they are a very understudied family of moths. Getting a lot of species here. For some reason, I guess this is a very good environment for leopard moths. Most of them have camouflage and look like seed pods or tree bark or dead leaves. Interesting. Of course, there are exceptions. There are colorful leopard moths, but generally, generally they are dark. Ladies and gentlemen, in the middle of the night, a lot of giant silk moths have come. Let me show you them. First of all, this pe Wow. This species here is incredible. Look at it, and it's amazing color. Wow. This is beautiful. Extremely, extremely beautiful. Wow. How gorgeous. Would you just look at it? And there's many of them. If we zoom out. We see there's more of them on the sheet as well. Let's see if they're the same species. Yeah, should be. Subtle little difference there in coloring. Guys, these are so gorgeous. Look at the colors of them. Wow, so amazing. These are the wild silk moths of Africa. Very big, very cool, very pretty, very awesome. I'm so happy with this. This makes my night incredible. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. As usual, I'm going to take the silk monster away and place them in this little thing. Hope. Get in here. Whoop. Uh oh. So, if in the video the sheet is not full of giant silk moths, that's why I keep removing them. I place the larger moths here in this enclosure so they don't bother me while I'm filming. Now, if we go here around the back, there's a lot of sneaky Saturnid boys. Sneaky silk moth boys that like to fly behind the sheet and land here. So just this one. And this one. Well, we've seen this one before, haven't we? We caught it earlier this night. That being said, I don't complain when we catch a, a second one. It's still very gorgeous species. All of them see, seem to have minor damage on the wings. Must be a very rough life out there. Imagine they get assaulted by bats and birds constantly. They get snapped at. So. And the truth is, silk moths don't live very long, so the wings deteriorate over time. A lot of moths will have imperfections for that reason. It's also the end of the rainy season, so maybe this is some of the last silk moths that fly at the moment. Anyway, still a beautiful golden creature that I'm going to lock up <laughs> in this little cage. Oop. 
to make sure I don't film the same insects twice. There you go. There's going to be a lot of moths in there soon. There's also this beautiful beast. Silk moths are famous for their eye spots. Their giant eye-like markings on their hind wings. But I guess this video demonstrates how most of the silk moths in this area have these sort of markings. There's exceptions because I think locally there are species like Holocaerina, which look like dead leaves. But the ones that we are getting tonight all have massive eye spots, this one included. Don't know how many silk moths we've already filmed tonight. Because if we go behind my door, there's also two more emperors. Emperor moths, silk moths. There are two more of these golden ones. Here's one and here's another one. Now this hawk moth right here could be Tereta orpheus, a tiny, cute little species found in Cameroon, Central African Republic, Congo, Gabon, Ghana, Ivory Coast, Guinea, Madagascar, Malawi, Mozambique, Nigeria, Rwanda, Sierra Leone, South Africa, Tanzania and Uganda. Interestingly, the host plants of this moth species are, drumroll, orchids. I know a lot of moths love orchids as pollinators, but actually the caterpillars of this species feed themselves with orchids. How unusual. Interesting. This is a really cool and mysterious species of cosset moth. The species name could be Eulophonotus hialipenis, but I have to do some more research because there are several species of them. So who knows? Its appearance is very unique for a species of carpenter moth. It seems to have clear and transparent wings and looks bee-like. It seems that the host plant of this weirdo include things such as cacao and coffee. It's found in Congo, Mozambique, South Africa, Tanzania, and Zimbabwe. And I guess I also have evidence it's in Uganda. It has clear wings and a compact body. Wow, very cool. Have to do some DNA testing though. Oh my god, ladies and gentlemen. I just saw one of the biggest hog moths that I've ever seen. Let's go check it out. Ladies and gentlemen, the interesting thing, it's like 5 o'clock in the morning and the large moths just keep coming. During this time, usually the large moths stop coming, but in this place they keep coming. <coughs> Seems like here in the mountains the moths prefer the late hours, including this monstrosity of a giant hog moth my god it's probably one of the largest I've seen in my life this right here is the biggest hog moth I've seen so far in Uganda it is truly massive I will tell you this species is Macropoliana natalensis hog moths are important species for the environment often being pollinators for specific types of flowers. This species is found in a lot of countries, including Cameroon, Central African Republic, Congo, Ethiopia, Gabon, Ghana, Ivory Coast, Kenya, Malawi, Mozambique, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, South Africa, Tanzania, Uganda and Zimbabwe. Caterpillars feed on plants, 
such as Markhamia lutea or Nile tulip tree, Olea europea or olive tree, Vitex remani or pipe stem tree, Brachistegia and Spatodea. The markings and size are absolutely and incredibly gorgeous. This is really one of my favorites. So beautiful. I don't want to hype everyone up too much yet, but some of the moths in this region require months of investigation and DNA sequencing. But it's possible that this research trip could yield several new species to science. Fingers crossed. Lots of silk moth so far, ladies and gentlemen. We are having a fantastic productive night here. Hope you guys are all enjoying the show and the big variety of species that we're getting. What's the temperature at night up here in the mountain? Let me show you. 15.2 degrees Celsius and 97% humidity. Oops, let me peel this stupid screen protector off. It's making it hard to read. Now for those of you who think that tropical insects... Oh well, my hands are making the thing warmer. But for those of you who think that tropical insects need constant heat and warmth, here is me proving you wrong. These giant silk moths and giant hog moths have no issue flying in 15 degrees Celsius. For the Fahrenheit people watching, grow up, you're using the wrong system. Anyway, and the humidity here is of course very high, but that's because we just had a little bit of rain at night, like a light drizzle. Um, but yeah, the temps don't lie. Well, they do, because my hands are warming this thingy up. So, let's put it away, but just so you know, it's the temperatures over here. Let's put it on the silk moth gauge. Hey, this cutie is Canararctia lyloides, a species found on higher altitudes in places like Wanda, Zaire, Kenya and Uganda. It's a little cutie of a tiger moth, charismatic and charming, just like me. Ah, it's suddenly quiet. Can you hear that? In Uganda there are many power cuts. That's why we have to use a generator to power our light bulbs. But suddenly the power came back. It means we can turn off that noisy thing. Sorry for the sound pollution, I thank you for watching this video anyway, despite the annoying sound. By the way, if you know the name of any of the unidentified species in this video, please send me a message. It would really help to know their names. Really common here tonight where the driver ants. Now I believe these to be from the genus Dorilis, which would make them a species of driver ant, also known as safari ants. Now, of course, I am not an ant expert, so guys, if you agree with my identification, do please kindly leave a comment for me to know if I am correct. Driver ants, however, are very common in Uganda, and I've encountered them several times in my life. Dorilis is a large genus of army ants found primarily in Central and East Africa, although the range also extends, it seems, into tropical Asia. Seasonally, when food supplies become short, they leave the hill and form marching columns of up to 50 million ants in some cases. I often see them crossing the road in large numbers. Despite the fact these ants may sting and are often seen as a nuisance, they are also excellent pest control. In fact, they are very good at getting rid of locusts and caterpillars that feed on crops and perhaps are a form of biocontrol. Farmers should be thankful for their existence. In the mating season, the alats or the winged drones, since queens of driver ants apparently do not grow wings, are formed. The drones are larger than the soldiers, and the queens, I suppose, are even larger. Driver ants do not perform a nuptial flight, but mate on the ground and the queens go off to establish new colonies. So according to my intel, even though I'm not an ant expert, these are the males of driver ants that I found that are looking to mate with queens. There's another big hog moth coming in. Hopefully it settles a little bit on the sheet. There you go. It's a big unit. Although it's smaller than the last one. But hey, I think that one set a high standard, so sitting 
So what we do now is we ignore it. As soon as it settles, its body temperature will cool down. And eventually, it will have cooled down so much that it can barely fly. And you can take close-ups and such. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, look at that. The heart moths here just keep getting prettier and prettier. It even has a tiny bit of pink scaling there on the thorax. Oh no, very fascinating. Now, I am totally new here in Africa, so all these species are totally new for me and my channel. Wow. Very beautiful. This hog moth right here is actually the most closely related to the death's head hog moth than any other hog moth. Yes, the genus Chelonia and Acherontia are closely related. I am really emotional because of the beauty of this be marvelous hog moth. It seems to be found almost anywhere in tropical Africa. Angola, Burkina Faso, Cameroon, Central African Republic, the Comoros Islands, Congo, Equatorial Guinea, Ethiopia, Gabon, Gambia, Ghana, Guinea, Ivory Coast, Kenya, La Reunion, Madagascar, Malawi, Mauritius, Mozambique, Nigeria, Rwanda, South Africa, Tanzania, Uganda, Zambia, Zimbabwe, just to name a few of them. Wow. The host plants appear to be mostly in the Lamiaceae and Solaniaceae family. Tonight, some of the giant hog moths are really stealing the show, aren't they? Ladies and gentlemen, the sun is coming up, so this is the end of the show. There will be no more moths showing up probably at this hour. And even if there are, I'm tired. So that's the end of the night. Good night, everyone. Bye bye. everyone. This is my room here in the mountains in Uganda and I'm here to investigate the local moth species and talk about biodiversity. Don't forget everything that I do on my channel is to support nature and to talk about conservation. Uganda is being deforested incredibly much at a very rapid pace. Forests are disappearing. It's possible a few decades from now, some of these species may not be here. Certainly not at the rate that this place is being deforested, unfortunately. So that's why I'm here to document and film them. Also, there is a very small but real possibility that there are some undocumented or rare species in there that have never been filmed before or have not been described to science. Either way, I hope that today you feel a bit more enthusiastic about insects and nature. If you like this kind of video, subscribe. I am making so many more videos of this nature, ladies and gentlemen. You will love it. Also, I would like to thank my friend Glenn for inviting me here in Uganda. I'm a YouTuber who travels the world to film butterflies and moths and other insects sometimes. Thing is, I can't afford to travel the world alone. It's because people invite me to other countries that facilitates trips like these. If you live in a country where there's a lot of moths near you, consider inviting me to your country. And maybe I will visit you to check moths with you. Thank you, Glenn, for inviting me to Uganda. Let's show you to my fans so they know what it's about. And good night. Thanks for watching, everyone. This was Bart Coppens, and I was kindly here invited to the country of Uganda by my friend, Glenn. Hi. Thank you very much, Glenn. It has been a wonderful experience to see this country and its wildlife for real. Now, what we are trying to do here, this is the property of Mr. Glenn, and we would like to see if we can get tourists or visitors on this property that we are trying to develop. So if you are interested in visiting this place, then feel free to either contact me or contact Mr. Glenn. I will put the contact information in the description of this video, or I will pin it in the comments. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video.
Stay tuned for more adventures in Uganda. My name is Bart and I travel the world to document rare insects. Now subscribe if you want to see more content like this. In the future, me and Glenn will release a website where keep people can book trips to Uganda. Mr. Glenn owns property in Uganda and in the future people could rent it from us to have a nice vacation in Uganda. If that sounds interesting, you can leave a comment. Once the website is ready, I will reply to your comment to notify you.